Hi, my name is Miss Christy. I am a teaching artist with the PACE program. I have the best job ever because I get to teach art to you. I teach with the PACE program that uses the subjects that your teacher teaches and we learn those same things through art. I will be working with your teacher all year long to bring you art lessons that will make learning exciting and adventurous. We are going to explore a lot of different subjects. You will recognize that some of the things that I talk about, your teacher is talking about too. We'll use some of those same skills that you learn in the classroom to make art. You might be watching this today from your classroom or you might be watching from home. We are coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. You can find these lessons anytime at the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel and the LPSS website. What do you think of when you think of art? And what do you think of when you think of an artist? What are they doing? Artists use shapes, lines, and colors to create something new. This artist uses shapes to create playful works of art that can show emotion and an idea. This kind of work is called abstract. Can you say abstract? Abstract. We can use our imagination to decide what we think it means. You can look at these shapes and colors and use your imagination and it can be anything that you want it to be. It reminds me of a playground. The only supplies you'll need for this project are markers and a regular piece of paper. If all you have is crayons, that's fine too. Okay, let's get started. So I want you to find the lightest color that you can find, whichever one you want to use. That would be one like yellow or pink or light blue. And we're going to start with a light color and we're going to make a few shapes. So at first you watch me and then you try. So I have my markers here and I'm gonna start with yellow. Yellow is the lightest color that I have. The first thing we're gonna do is anywhere on your paper, you're gonna draw a circle. And remember, it does not have to be perfect. It does not have to look a certain way or be a certain size. It's your artwork, so you can make it whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna draw a circle right about here, and I'm gonna color it in. So you go ahead and try that. While you're coloring in your shapes, I'm going to be showing you some different shapes that can be found in nature. You can see here that there are lots of different kinds of circles that you can find in nature. There, I finished my yellow circle. So what shape should we draw next? Does anybody have any suggestions? What shapes do you know? Ooh, a square. Let's draw a square. So how many sides does a square have? A square has four sides. One, two, three, four. So let's draw a square. You're gonna choose a different color. I'm gonna go with green. So anywhere on your paper, you can put a green square. and then color it in. So while you're coloring in your square, I'm gonna show you some pictures of where squares can be found in nature. You can see in these pictures that different minerals grow into these shapes. So the squares found in nature are often in minerals like table salt. 
the salt that we put on our food, those tiny little things are actually shaped like a square or a cube. Has anyone ever heard of a cube? You might have heard of cubes in Minecraft. Like this guy. I, some of you might know Minecraft and everything in Minecraft is made of square cubes. So we have squares, we have circles. Is there any other shape that you know of? Ooh, triangles. So how many sides does a triangle have? That's right, triangles have three sides. One, two, three. So let's draw a triangle. What color are you gonna use? You can use any color you want to. I'm gonna use, see I already did yellow. How about red? I'm gonna use red for my triangle. And you can make it any size that you want. So there's my triangle. So I'm gonna color that in. And while I'm coloring that in, you go ahead and try. I have some pictures here to show you of triangles that can be found in nature. You can see that this grasshopper's legs are creating a triangle here. And there are lots of flowers shaped like this where you can see clearly that they're triangles. There, there's my triangle. So let's add some lines to this. We're gonna try and connect our shapes with a couple of different lines. The artist that created this artwork grouped together different shapes and lines to create an interesting picture. And I said before that you can use your imagination to decide what you think it is. I have here a picture of two different playgrounds and you can see that in that playground at the top there are shapes and lines and in the one at the bottom there are shapes and lines. Are there any lines that you can see? That's right, there's a wavy line. So let's draw a wavy line first. You can use any color you want. I think I'm gonna start with one of my cool colors. I have purple, blue, and green, and I, my favorite color is purple, so I'm gonna go with purple wavy lines. And I want you to find one of your shapes and come off of that shape and create a wavy line. Can you do that? Go ahead and try. While you're doing that, I think I'm gonna make another wavy line right next to it. And fill it in. So here's that picture of a playground again. Are there any other lines you see on that playground? A zigzag line. That's right, there's a zigzag line. And what is it that's creating that zigzag line? The stairs leading up to the slide. So let's go ahead and draw a zigzag line. I want you to find one of your shapes any one of them and draw a zigzag line coming off of that shape. So let's see, how about orange? Come off of my circle with a zigzag line. I'm gonna stop right there. You try that. While you're making your zigzag line, I'm gonna draw a little bit more to go with this one. I'm just going to double it up and then I'm going to fill it in. So usually at a playground you climb up the stairs and when you're at the top there's usually a slide. 
Can you see the slides in this picture? One of the slides creates a very special line. Do you know what that line is? A spiral. A spiral is a line that starts in one place and curls around. So let's create a spiral. Watch me first and then you try. Let's see, what color am I gonna use this time? How about blue? So coming off of my red, let's see, right here, I'm gonna create a spiral. So I'm gonna start by going out, down, and then around and around and around, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Can you see that? You try. I'm gonna make mine a little bit thicker. So instead of a yellow spiral slide, I have a blue one. So lines and shapes can also show different things. If we were to make a blue wavy line, then we would, that's water. So I'm gonna make another wavy line coming off of this red triangle that is a wavy line. Water is something that we can feel and we can hold in a cup, but does water have a shape? Water is one of those things that only takes on the shape of the object that it's inside. Did you know that air behaves the same way? Does air have a shape? It's all around us. We can't see it, but we can feel it and we can hear it when it's blowing through the trees, but we can't really see it unless it picks up leaves and blows them around. So that's what we're drawing here with this spiral slide on our playground. We're also thinking about what wind might look like if we could see it. So let's draw another one of those windy spiral lines. Do you know where you wanna put your second spiral slide? Let me see. I think I'm gonna put one coming off of this very solid green square. Again, you go out and then around and around and get smaller and smaller as you go. So I'm gonna do that. You go ahead and try. I'm gonna make mine a little bit thicker and color it in. So wind and water are not solid objects. What is a solid object? Your desk is a solid object. This marker is a solid object. If we are drawing something to, and making it look, to look solid, we would draw shapes like these. So we can think of this circle as being a sandbox, or we can think of this triangle as being one of those places that you get to climb up and then slide down at a, on a playground. The zigzag line might be a staircase going up to the top of one of those playground of those playgrounds and then you would slide down wee all the way to the bottom so what rectangles do we see in our playground here look closely at this picture and see if you can pick out where the, the rectangles are that's right, the orange slides are rectangles. They're something that is at an angle or a diagonal, so it kind of creates an orange diagonal line, but it's also a very straight slide that goes down to the ground, and it's a rectangle. So let's draw a rectangle on our picture. But this time, we're gonna 
overlap. Have you ever heard of the word overlap? It might be a new word for you, but it's when you put one thing on top of another. And in art, it can create the idea or the illusion that one thing is in front of the other. What happens if your two colors combine? If I were to put a rectangle that's blue on my yellow circle, what color would be created if I overlap? Let's find out. I'm going to put a rectangle right here. And then when I color it in, this part is blue, but then this part is what? Green, that's right, because yellow and blue make green. So I'm gonna find another place in my picture to overlap a shape over another shape or a line over another line. Can you do that? You can watch me first and then you try. I'm gonna pick a different color. What color do you think I should pick? Oh, someone said green. That's my mom's favorite color. So let's do green. I'm gonna put another rectangle somewhere. Where do you think I should put it? I think I'm going to put it down here at the bottom and maybe it's a balance beam. It's going to be a little bit overlapped with my spiral line. I'm going to color it in while you make your rectangle. We are trying to fill up our playground with, with as many fun things to play on as possible. What else is on a playground that you might like to play on? A seesaw or uh, the monkey bars? I used to like the monkey bars when I was little. So you hang there and you swing. Well, what kind of lines make up the monkey bars? If you saw one of my other videos, you might have learned that there are different kinds of lines called straight lines, dashed lines, dotted lines. And so you put those together with straight lines and it would be dashes. So let's make a dashed line somewhere on our picture. I think I'm going to use purple this time and I'm going to make monkey bars. Where should I put my monkey bars? Well, I have some purple here and so I'm going to start right there and I'm going to draw two straight lines side by side. Do you know what that's called when two lines are side by side but they don't cross? Parallel. Can you say that? parallel lines. Very good. So you go ahead and draw two parallel lines somewhere on your playground. One, two. Now to finish our monkey bars, we're going to make those little lines that go across. So watch me first and then you try. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. There's my monkey bars. It also looks like a ladder, doesn't it? Now, if we made the same small lines, but then lined them up side by side, we would be creating a line called a dashed line. And you might sometimes see a dashed line on a road in the middle of the road. It divides the right side of the road from the left side of the road. So let's create a dashed line on our playground and maybe it's one of those balance beams that you can jump on. 
one to another. I'm going to put my dashed line about in brown. Maybe it's made of wood. I'm going to put it right here beside my red triangle. My dashed line is going to go just like this. And I think I'm going to keep going past my blue wavy line. Can you try that? A dashed line. Well, if we have a dashed line, why not a dotted line? So you know what a dot is. When you string a bunch of those dots together, it's almost like Mardi Gras beads. It's one little dot after another. So I'm gonna draw a dotted line on my playground in green again. So let's see, where should I put my dotted line? I am going to follow this wavy purple line with a wavy dotted line. Can you have a dotted line that's wavy? Sure you can. So watch me first and then you try. Go ahead, you try now. I'm gonna keep going with my green dotted line. I think our playground is almost done. I hope we can maybe overlap a few more shapes. Are there any other shapes out there that you might wanna draw on your playground? I, I'm showing you this playground here so that maybe you could get some ideas. I think my playground might need another triangle. So let's draw another triangle. And where it overlaps, yellow and blue makes what color? Green, that's right. So we have here a group of shapes and lines to create a picture that you can imagine would be a very fun playground to play on. As you continue coloring in your shapes, I wanted to talk to you about the shapes in your environment. I encourage you to look around in your neighborhood, in, in the city that you live in, and look for these shapes that we've talked about. Look for the lines that we've talked about. So often you'll see street signs, like the stop sign. You know when you see that big red octagon that it's time for you to stop and look both ways. When you see a big yellow triangle, usually those street signs mean that you need to be very careful and look around you. You have to slow down. Just like with a red light, yellow light, and green light, you have to follow those rules of the road. And so many of the shapes that are used are meant to get our attention. So these shapes get our attention for a very good reason, because they're geometric shapes. They're shapes that we will see all of our life. We'll see them uh, in artwork, we'll see them in our homes, in our schools, we'll see them everywhere. So we're very familiar with geometric shapes. Have you ever heard that word before? Geometric? Well, geometric shapes are those basic shapes that you've been learning since kindergarten. Circles, squares, rectangles, triangles, they're all really important shapes for you to know and it's also really fun to draw them. So I hope you enjoyed your lesson today about shapes and lines. We learned that you can find these things in your environment. 
We also learned that solids, liquids, and gases can be seen as shapes as well. A liquid and a gas doesn't have its own shape, so it takes on the shape of the object it's inside. A solid, like a block, or your marker, or your desk, those are solid shapes. They're called solids. So please look around your neighborhood for those shapes and keep making art every day. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see you next time.